My name is Erica Geisbrecht, and I'm an associate professor in the Biochemistry and Molecular Biophysics Department. I think muscle is an understudied tissue. We like to, to think about muscle as a model for understanding muscle diseases. So our lab uses the fruit fly, uh, Drosophila melanogaster, as a genetic model to understand how uh, tissues are made and formed. The muscles that form in the fruit fly and the way they're formed are also the same way that they form in vertebrate systems. We'd like to understand how do we get muscles that form and how can this be related to other processes. The other side of that question is to understand how we can take genes that are necessary for muscle structure or function in the fly and relate that to human disease. For example, our laboratory has uncovered one gene that is mutated in patients that have a disease called limb girdle muscular dystrophy and the patients undergo uh, progressive muscle wasting and of course have a loss of quality of life. And unfortunately for the muscle diseases or myopathies that are known today, there are no cures. There are only palliative treatments for most patients. So our main goal is to try to identify new proteins that are essential in muscle development and or maintenance, understand how they work by manipulating the fly, and then hopefully relate that to human disease. My freshman year in, in college, I started working in a research laboratory and it sort of hooked me into research. And so I was able to continue that all four years of being an undergraduate. So one of my sort of main goals is to train both undergraduates and graduate students within the lab. And we're very lucky because we use a genetic model, it's a great learning tool. So, you know, students take classes in genetics while well, they can come into the laboratory and, you know, do the, that same genetics they learn about. So I think it helps reinforce class problems. But from a broader perspective, I think I'd like students to understand the process of research, how you think about a question, how you answer a question, and also maybe to realize that, um, you know, uh, things are not so simply solved. Primarily we use genetics, biochemistry, molecular biology, microscopy, and cell culture to answer our main questions. We've uncovered a gene that interacts with genes that are involved in Parkinson's disease. And then unexpectedly, we've also found that some proteins required for the clotting process during a wound, for example, are also required to attach uh, muscles tightly to tendon cells. And so none of these um, sort of questions or experiments would have been predicted by our previous results. They all came out of research experiments that were done. I would like to continue to pursue our two basic ideas of understanding development and understanding healthy muscle tissue in the context of pursuing new questions that arise because I think these unexpected discoveries are really what make big forward advances in science.